Well, thank you so much. Thank you for being here. Um, I'd also like to thank my family for being with me. I'm going to get started because I want to be able to leave a little bit of time for um, a few questions. Um, but I wanted you to know that I reached out to Ben over the weekend and congratulated him for winning the election, and I wish him luck. I also want to say to my supporters and all of the people who voted for me, thank you so very much. As a member of the House of Representatives and as a mother, I often measure my decisions by the secondary question of at what cost. I've dedicated my time in Congress to fiscal discipline, limited government, and personal responsibility. I have fought hard for the taxpayers, for victims of sexual harassment, for our seniors, but most of all, for our unborn children. I have raised your voice in immigration helping to create fees in our parks and in our schools. I stood up for our vets and our men and women in uniform. All of these decisions were made with personal, physical, and moral costs in mind. No matter what anyone says, the cost was worth it. I am proud of the fact that I nagged the president every day to bring Joshua Holt home. He is an American, and all Americans should know that their country and their representatives will not forget or abandon them. Now, when the president, when President Trump took a jab at me because he said, because he thought that the race was over, and he lamented that I wouldn't ask him to come to the state of Utah, I was somewhat surprised at first. Um, but with every decision I make, I have to ask myself again, at what cost? The president's behavior towards me made me wonder, what did he have to gain by saying such a thing about a fellow, a fellow Republican? It was not really about asking him to do more, was it? Or was it something else? Well, Mr. President, we'll have to chat about that. However, this gave me a clear vision of his world as it is. No real relationships, just convenient transactions. That is an insufficient way to implement sincere service and policy. Above all, my experience in the last year has provided me a big reminder of who I am and what my purpose is. This election experience and these comments shines a spotlight on the problems Washington politicians have with minorities and black Americans. It's transactional. It's not personal. You see, we feel like politicians claim they know what's best for us from a safe distance, yet they're never willing to take us home. Because Republicans never take minorities, minority communities into their home and citizens into their homes and into their hearts, they stay with Democrats and bureaucrats in Washington because they do take them home, or at least make them feel like they have a home. I've seen the cost to conservatives for not truly taking people into their hearts. Democrats saw newly elected black members and women to Congress in this election. This is a matter of fact that Republicans lost in this regard. However, minority communities need to ask themselves the question also, at what cost? What is the cost of staying with the Democrat Party that perpetually delivers exactly what you need to stay exactly where you are. To make poverty tolerable instead of temporary. People who judge their success by how many people they can put into poverty programs versus how many people they can get out of them. I am a Republican. I know conservative policies work. They lift everyone. They lift the poor, the young, the vulnerable, the black and the white. Our conservative policies save our young and unborn children. When the pundits tell us that we're out of luck, the deck is stacked against us, we say no, no way, not in this country. Because under conservative policies, the deck is not stacked against us and we all have a chance. Conservative policies make it so that no one in this country is predestined to be poor. I know because I've lived them. I've put them into action. i promoted them throughout our state and across the country. The problem is not the policy. It is that we are never taken into hearts and into homes. 
I've been so proud to be your representative in the state of Utah. I want to thank all of you who believed me and believed in me. You stood in line for hours, some of you four or five hours, to cast your vote. It has meant so much. You have taken me into your heart, and that means more to me than you'll ever imagine. I am always asked, how can you be a black member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, a Republican, and a woman in the state of Utah? I would always proudly say, follow the sun. It is a warm, compassionate place. Utah is a place where the sun is always rising, where, we, where families look out for each other. But this election was horrible, and it has cost us greatly. I saw the media write uneducated, unfair, irresponsible stories. My ethics, my record, lied about, tarnished, and repeated over and over again on TV right in front of our children. Coordinated efforts presented a false case against me and those ads that were created and funded by my opponent. If we all remember, my opponent started his campaign with a shower commercial produced and paid for by board members from his friends at the Alliance for Better Utah. Sadly, their character assassination tactics have so stained our state that now citizens should expect that this is how elections will be won. Victory is theirs. I believe that we've elected a wolf in sheep's clothing, but the question remains at what cost to the people of Utah. There is a cost, and we will pay it, but starting in January, my role will change, and we still have a, have a lot of work to do. We will not yield the moral high ground, whatever the cost. We will give people the policies to free them. We will treat people like assets that can be developed, not liabilities that need to be managed. Whatever the cost, we will fight to keep people in black communities from being trapped in poverty. Whatever the cost, we will save our unborn children from being killed. Together, we will promote the policies of freedom in all communities while we take people into our hearts and into our home. We will do this, and we will proclaim that we are Republicans and we will be, all of us, will be proud of it. Good news is, I'm not going away. But now, I am unleashed, I am untethered, and I am unshackled. And I can say exactly what's on my mind. I have taken an oath to uphold and defend the Constitution of the United States. I will continue to do that. I have sworn to protect life at all stages of development, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And I will continue to do that. I will continue to raise conservative values while taking people into my heart and into my home, wherever I go. Best of all, I don't need a title or permission to do that. Thank you. Representative, uh, your, your last thoughts there kind of caught my mind. You see, you're unshackled now. Mm -hmm. You can say what's on your mind. Mm -hmm. Why couldn't you do that the last four years? Well, you always have to be incredibly careful. You have to measure all of the costs. You have to, um, you know, I, there are a lot of people as a representative that you are representing, and you want to make sure that you are incredibly careful. In, in some of your in, in some of your responses and some of your thoughts, so I think that's the difference. Um, the difference is uh, I, I I'm not a house. Of, I'm not a come January I won't be a representative for Utah's fourth congressional district, and so I can actually um, say the things that I believe uh, will make some good uh, positive changes in our country, and I don't have to worry about uh, who who's going to be okay with it and who's not going to be okay with that. Will Was you run again in 2020? I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Lindsay, I know Lindsay had a question. I was, I was going to ask, did you make a mistake by not speaking out more as a representative, but by, by, in your own words, by holding back and, and saying you had to be careful in what you say? Should you have just spoken up more? I, I feel I do not have any regrets 
um, for my actions and my behaviors as a representative. I believe that the branch of government that's closest to people is the House of Representatives, and that kept me um, in, in that arena. And I needed to make sure that I was the best representative for the fourth district that I possibly could be. And I don't have any regrets in my behavior or my thoughts or um, the things that I've said, no. Can you talk about lessons learned during the election? Did you go negative improperly yourself? I talk about, I'm sorry. Lessons learned during this election? Well, no. I, I felt as if, um, did, did I learn? Yes, I learned quite a bit. Um, I still and uh, believe that all of my thoughts, all of the things that I put out there were honest and truthful and verified. And, um, and it was policy driven. It wasn't um, about uh, assassinating anyone's character or about putting false um, information out there. And so I, um, I will go, and I would, I would have preferred that this would be, this would have been an election that was focused on issues and uh, policies and votes that I've taken and different things like that. So um, yeah, I, there, there are lessons that I've learned, and uh, and I will get to apply those in, in different ways. How do you think right, the Republican Party? Thank you so is very much. much. Just one more. Yeah. I was just going to ask, how do you think the Republican Party has changed since your election, especially since 2016, in regard to minority communities? Well, I think um, as also I felt this frustration as a member of Congress that I, I wasn't um, my I wasn't allowed to use my talents as as well. I did I did as much as I possibly could. I actually did quite a bit more than. Uh, than, um, than the average. In terms of even passing, like I said, five bills, um, I had to go out of my committee to do that. But I did not feel as if my talents were used um, in, in, in my position well enough. It's more about who takes credit for what bills than it is actually putting your best foot forward and having your, most, your messenger counts. And so, um, you know, there, there are things that uh, I think I'll be able to do. and. Um, as as a person who is not uh, in a representative role, I'll have um, I'll have some opportunities to get out there and continue to raise uh, conservative voices and, and make sure I do I, I I serve this country. Have you seen changes since President Trump was elected? Oh, there have been a lot of changes in the Republican some, Party. In the Republican Party, some good, some bad. Yeah. Absolutely. Do you feel your talents were used because of the president Trump and you go back to Washington?